So Nisha, can you do any impressions? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. well that was a short <laughs> intro then. The superb lyrebird may not be Australia's most famous endemic creature, but I would argue it's certainly the one capable of causing the most carnage. A claim you may dismiss considering what else lives in Australia, but what other animal in Australia do you know can turn into a chainsaw? Okay, so you mentioned it's called a lyrebird. Yes. Is that because it's meant to mimic other creatures? So yeah. Like, like, sort of, you know, a liar. Yeah, it's lying what it is. And we should clarify now, it's liar the instrument, but I guess it has a nice dual meaning, considering, like, you know, the bird is lying about what it is. Yeah. Because um, uh, for reasons unknown, which we'll discuss in a moment, the superb liar bird is capable of mimicking the sound made by almost any other animal in the forest. And it is known as the most talented natural mimic on Earth. I'm assuming because it's a bird, it will probably mimic other bird calls. Yeah, and uh, it's noted that the superb liar bird is so good at mimicking the bird calls with like no other species that members of that species will be fooled. Even the original is fooled. You're probably thinking, well, Carl, they're fucking birds. Of course they're fooled. Birds are stupid. So I should point out that even bird experts, like ornithologists or bird nerds, if you will, are also fooled by the superb liar bird. And there are stories about ornithologists going into the forest, tracking like, you know, a, a specific type of bird and finding a superb liar bird. <laughs> Which must be like, what a troll that is. It's like, oh man, I found this like really super rare bird. It's just a liar bird going, ha ha. <laughs> because well, they can mimic human voices. So there are stories about them, like, you know, mimicking the sound of laughter. You're probably thinking, well, why? And the answer is we don't actually know. I imagine the reason they do it is to attract different types of mates. You'd think so, wouldn't you? That's a sound theory, but it's one that has holes blown just all the way through it by the fact female liar birds will also impersonate and mimic other birds, seemingly for no other reason than they find it amusing. And that, to me, is the most terrifying aspect, that the birds just like, like doing it. Yeah. So, like, have you ever seen those videos of like crows skiing? No. Have you seen that? No, it's like, it sounds uh, hilarious. There's a famous video clip out there of like, during a snowstorm, there's crows standing on bits of rubbish, surfing down a rooftop, <laughs> seemingly for fun. <laughs> and I'm always just a little bit freaked out by stories of animals doing things that are distinctly human. Mm. That was a, a story about a dolphin once that was observed swimming around wearing a salmon as a hat. And that to me is just really like weird. It's like, why is, why is the, the dolphin wearing a salmon hat? That's real, that's a thing. <laughs> Oh, wait, is, is, that, like, is there a picture of this? I'm not sure if there is, but it's just a like story. So if there's a picture, I'm oh, sure it's behind so. me. If not, Photoshop a picture of, like, you know... A dolphin in the a, He just wore it as a hat. And then dolphins, like, huff puffer fish. Have you heard about that? Yeah. They'll huff puffer fish to get high. The one that always freaks me out, though, is when gorillas walk on two feet. Because they've got such little tiny little squat legs, and they walk like builders. Like, oi, oi, oi. <laughs> it's so good. So today we're not just talking about the whole you know, lyrebird species, we're talking no. about one particular one. Yes, one example of the lyrebird species known as Chook, who was a resident of Adelaide Zoo in Australia, who was known as being like, you know, the best example of what his species can accomplish, because in addition to being able to mimic the sound of upwards of 20 different birds, um, he was also known for being able to mimic the sounds of just like, you know, everyday life in the zoo, including like camera clicks. That was a camera shutter. Nisha, you watched that clip before we filmed this, and it's not just that Chuke could make the sound of a camera, it's that he could make the sound of different cameras. Yeah, you could hear him doing the motor. Like, yeah, in, in an old-fashioned wind-up camera, and it's like... Yeah, I'm oh, speechless. Yeah, and then the car alarm happened. <laughs> so then he just assumes car alarm form. I was, like, even more shocked <laughs> the further it went on. I was like, no, this cannot be real. But then imagine how shocked you'd be if you're walking past his enclosure in the zoo and then the bird starts making a car alarm noise. And you're probably wondering, well, okay, so yeah, it makes sense that a bird would like, you know, mimic the sound of what it hears, like camera clicks and that sort of thing, and maybe a car alarm in the distance. Where does a chainsaw come into this? Well, it's noted that at some point during his tenure as a resident of Adelaide Zoo, a panda enclosure near to Chuke's, uh, you know, own enclosure underwent renovations. And during that time, Chuke just so happened to pick up on the sound of various power tools and would then start mimicking them, including a chainsaw and, and this is one that cracks me up, the sound of a pounding sledgehammer. <laughs> and 
Imagine for a moment you're walking past the bird enclosure and the bird starts making the sound of a fucking sledgehammer. Like, think about that. I think I'd just run away. I, don't would. know, I wouldn't know what's happening. And there are plenty of clips out there of like just people who went to the zoo and saw Chute doing this. Obviously, like, seemingly the bird did it for its own enjoyment and greatly relished like, you know, the reaction of people when they saw him do this kind of thing. And um, Chuke was so talented that he even ended up scoring TV gigs. So what kind of TV gig are we talking? We're talking about the best gig an animal can get, and that is a spot on a David Attenborough documentary. Because you may have noticed that, like, you know, one of the clips that we just shown was narrated by none other than David Attenborough. And this is kind of a weird story because the David Attenborough documentary that obviously we just put a clip in of doesn't make reference to the fact this is a specific species of lyrebird known for making these noises. They frame it as if it is just a lyrebird in the wild and not one from a zoo who's like, you know, been around people for a very long time. And the thing that David Attenborough says, and this is like, you know, it's a little bit sneaky this they say oh he's mimicking the sound of the forest including you know like people cutting down trees nearby and then obviously they show the clip of you know a chook being a chainsaw and now the sounds of foresters and their chainsaws working nearby Well, that's not exactly the truth, is it? No, it was like, you know, the sound of a panda enclosure being renovated, but they frame it in the show as if, oh no, this is just a wild one we've encountered yeah. that just so happens to have heard a chainsaw nearby. And you can kind of forgive Attenborough for those like slightly underhanded tactics because he's trying to draw attention to a very real threat and that is people cutting down the fucking rainforests. Yeah. But during the episode, they never make reference to the fact this isn't a random bird they encountered in the forest and it just so happened to make chainsaw noises. This is one specific kind of bird that was in close proximity to humans for many years and is in fact known for doing this. Well, it's like uh, the documentary Frozen Planet. Yes. Wasn't there like something about they filmed a polar bear in like a zoo, in a zoo enclosure, yes. but then said it was in the wild? Yeah. And if you don't know what we're talking about, there was a Attenborough documentary um, set in Antarctica and the Arctic about like the various creatures that live there that purports to show for the first time ever on film, a polar bear baby being born. And the way that the episode is framed, um, it makes you think that they are actually filming this baby polar bear in the wild. And it turns out, no, it wasn't. It was a zoo enclosure and they just framed it as such because you know what? No cameraman has the balls to go into a polar bear's fucking den and like shove a camera in the face of its babies. And the public understandably felt a little bit misled by that, but again, you can kind of forgive it because like, yeah, we're trying to make a show here and we're trying to we couldn't get the shot because like, how the fuck are you going to find a polar bear in the Arctic? <laughs> it's white. It's a big white bear surrounded by snow. The fuck are you going to do? Have you ever heard about the other controversies about some of those Atomra documentaries? Because there are some really funny ones. No, but I'm wondering now. Because okay. I, I do watch a lot, of, a lot of those. And I just kind of think, yeah, everything's in the wild. Yeah. They spend years doing this. So I'm intrigued as to okay. what you're going to say. Well, the latest thing they did, it was uh, Planet Earth 2, which I would highly recommend anybody go watch. It's on Netflix right now. And that got a lot of criticism because... Obviously, the, the footage is phenomenal. They always get the best fucking footage on those shows. That's why they take 10 years to make, and it's why they always win all the awards. And there was a lot of criticism levied against that show, not for, like, you know, faking shots, but for adding sound effects that weren't there originally. Like, for example, there's, like, a, one of, like, a millipede or a centipede walking, and they add little footsteps. And there were a lot of complaints, because, like, that's not the sound this creature makes. It's a little bit misleading. It's like, you know, it's... Similar to the thing with Chuke and the polar bear, where we understand why you did it, but like this is framed as like a purely factual show, and you're adding dumb sound effects to animals walking and shit like that. I think, I think they try and add a bit of humour sometimes in oh, the shows, yeah. like because the, they will go from like really depressing scenes. They always do, yeah. To like try and make it a bit more. Upbeat. Oh my god! Did you see the other one that he did, the Netflix one? Maybe was that like, the one? No, Attenborough did a Netflix one for Netflix. That's about like you know the planet's fucking dying. And rather than showing, like, you know, nice footage of animals just, like, you know, just living their life, they show, oh, no, here's just how animals are just, like, getting their shit rocked by climate change. And they have one of just endless walruses falling off cliffs. Because me and my dad were just sat watching, like, Netflix. 
oh, there's a new David Attenborough documentary. Do you want to watch that? Because we both love animals. And then it gets to the walrus episode. And me and my dad are sat there with a cup of tea. And we're just there like that. That's like the one of the seal that they film getting eaten by a killer whale. And you just oh, and you no. feel so bad. It's like, well, yeah, yeah that's nature. Yeah, because there's that one where there's a penguin being chased by a seal and it gets onto a, a bit of ice and the seal's like struggling to get on and the penguin's just stood there like, yeah, it's what so, are you going to do? It's so fucking dramatic. It's like, um, uh, have you seen the one of like the last stand from like a bison? And it's all the wolves, like, um, basically, if this big pack of wolves, like, track down a bison, and it's on its own. And it's filmed like a fucking martial arts movie, where you've got this huge, big, buff bison, like, bring it on. I know that you've got a show, I know that's what nature is, it's just, yeah. it comes out of nowhere. It's like the one, I think, and this is the one, I do not watch this, and if you are, if you like animals, do not watch this bit, but they're showing um, baby turtles. Baby turtles being born. And turtles, uh, fun fact, the way they orientate themselves with the world when they're born is they walk toward light because they think it's the, the moon, the stars, and that'll be above the ocean. The problem is now, obviously, a lot of these areas are all built up, so now they go towards the street and they just crawl into no, the street and get hit by cars. No. And it's like, no! Why? Why would you? Oh, they fall into the sewer. And like they put, they show footage of it, and I think if I was that cameraman, I'd be so fucking depressed. Just filming baby turtles falling into the sewer, and there's nothing you could do to help them. Yeah. Because they're not allowed to, like, you know, interfere with the reality of like nature. Yeah, I I um, saw something. It was I can't remember what sort of bird it was, but there's these birds that like kind of nest on like cliff areas. Oh, I've seen it, and the birds fall off. It's yeah, like, no! they fall off the nest, and then when the the parent comes back, it doesn't recognise it as it's. You know, so they um, just leave it. Yeah, it just like leaves it. It's like, oh, you're not my uh, baby. The chick is actually right below its parent, but because it's not on the nest, the parent doesn't recognise it. Because you're not on the nest, yeah. you're not my baby. So then just sit there, and the baby's trying to get back on. And it's like, like oh, why? Well, I know why they do it. It's to make you feel bad, and it's to make you do what I always do. And go, oh man, I better go give some money to a fucking animal charity. I feel so fucking bad. It's like we have to make like give big props to like the lizard that escapes the snakes. Yes, I the always most, remember that one. The most dramatic thing I've ever seen, the curse. Like, that is the most alpha lizard I've ever seen. So it, it's, it's what, five seconds old? Yeah. It's five seconds yeah. old and gets attacked by a million snakes at once. Oh, like, legs it across the sand and these snakes like chasing it. It's just like, whoa. Yeah, and they <laughs> have the like the side. footage and it's sat there as the snakes coming in. Yeah. And it's, oh, it's, it's the tensest thing I've ever seen, it's maybe so ever. Weird. The tensest thing I've ever seen is when you see it and it gets attacked. Yeah. And you think, well, it's dead. And then you see it squeeze out. It's like, go on, hero lizard. You do it. And then you see it jump as the snake comes out and misses and falls down. And the snake looks like a fucking idiot. <laughs>